Hello everyone, well it's time again to have a look inside my advent box. Oh, so sorry about that, I put this cushion in the way. I'll just move that to one side and uh, get my advent box. Sorry about that folks. Well here it is, the familiar advent box. What goodies could lay inside today? You won't be seeing this for very much longer because of course we are very near to the big day. So then, let's have a look. Lift the lid. Oh, well, I know there's two things in this advent box to look at today. And I did say in my last brochure browse video that I wouldn't be doing another one. But uh, unfortunately, I've run out of a few ideas and time is pressing on and I need to get some more videos done. So I'm afraid it's another flick through this brochure. But as compensation, I've actually got something else to look at as well. This little Miele vacuum. So let's take the Miele vacuum out and we'll take this bro brochure out. This is a Hoover brochure from 1998, a bit glossy. We'll be having a look at that. There's some quite rare vacuum cleaners in that particular brochure, some I've never seen before. But uh, the brochure's coming up. We'll just take a quick look at this. I was going to show you this earlier, but uh, I couldn't find the wand and the floor nozzle, it had gone missing. But I found it today when I was looking for some more brochures. So here it is, look, it's a scale model of a Miele. Now this is uh, very small, as you can see, it fits into my hand like that. There we go, Ooh, which way, that way, that way, that way, there. Ooh, ooh, oops, that's why I keep losing it, it keeps dropping off. So this is a little model of a Canary Yellow Miele. You've got your 360 degree swivel hose. It doesn't actually work. It's got a little tiny battery in there. And at the top, we've got a dial that you can actually rotate. And it's very small, but it's also got an on off button, which actually does work surprisingly for such a tiny little model. We turn it on and if you can just about here, I'll hold it closer to the mic. It's got the noise of a vacuum. And that will go on for a little while until it turns itself off. So I am all out of focus. There we go, it's turned itself off. And you get a little green light as well that comes on. Oops, there we go. So there it is. It doesn't open up or anything. No tool compartment. So basically, it's a small version of the other Theo Klein Miele that I showed you. This is also, I believe, by Theo Klein. It's part of a range. They do a range of small appliances, smaller scale appliances, which includes a washing machine, a dishwasher, a cooker, I think. And you can also get a whole kitchen set. I'm not sure if you can still get it. So there we go, that's something briefly for you to look at. If it's all in focus, I'm not sure. I'll have to check this footage. It's very hard to see from this angle where I'm viewing this from. But anyway, there we go. An extra little bonus, little toy scale model of a Miele cylinder vacuum or canister vacuum. Okay, let's have a look at this Hoover brochure. Okay, so this is a Hoover floor care brochure from 1998 and on the front cover is a pure power that I would have loved to have owned but uh, sadly I've never actually seen one and um, they're very very rare. It's unusual to have a pure power that's described as rare but this is a pure power light and the difference between this and most of the other pure powers is the whole body, more or less, is translucent, so you can see all the internal gubbins. Right then, let's open up and see the contents. So, in 1998, so it's not that long ago, is it, 1998? It's not even 10,000 years ago. What? <laughs> am I saying? I've been doing far too many. It is, no, it isn't 10,000 years ago, is it? <laughs> oh, God. No, they didn't have Hoover vacuum cleaners 10,000 years ago. Right. <laughs> well, this particular brochure is celebrating Hoover's 
90th anniversary, which makes it... Well, what are we on now? Well, we're on 2016. I'm, I'm thinking we're on 2000 and I don't know what we're on. I said we're on 2014 one, in one video. I'm losing my marbles, I'm afraid. Um, so here we go. Hoover 1908 to 1998, 19th anniversary jubilee. Since introducing the first electrically powered cleaner in 1908, Hoover has continued to launch new products in floor care, laundry and refrigeration. 90 years on, Hoover still focuses on improving the performance of its products to meet the expectations of today's consumer. So we have the flagship here, a flagship pure power. We have a little Ariane, um, the Telios and the Alpina S, that looks like. And then there's a the contents page, the other side. So we have the pure power. Turbo Power, Alpina, Telios, Ariane, Brush and Wash, which is an American cleaner, multi-purpose and shampoo polishers and handheld cleaners. It's funny that the... I'll show you the Turbo Powers in a minute. I'm not sure if it's Turbo 2 or Turbo 1. Hmm, it's interesting. Can't remember what's in here. Right, so focusing now on the Pure Power, which was the flagship upright range. We've got another big picture of that translucent purple. Now in this picture they obviously haven't put the dust bag in because you can see some of the ribbing inside the dust bag compartment. You wouldn't see that if the bag was there. So it's just talking about Hoover Pure Power's unique sealed suction system. Best cleaning performance, best dirt retention and disposal. And this is actually comparing this next, these next two charts so obviously, bagless cleaners, more specifically Dyson bagless cleaners, were making inroads. Dyson were taking a lot of the market. So Hoover are showing here how the air watts of their vacuums is higher than a, a bagless cleaner of the time. I'm not sure which model they're referring to. I don't think they can say, but it would have been a popular. And that's what I always found, that the bagged cleaners always had more suction power even with a, with a full bag, than a lot of the earlier bagless machines. Some of the earlier Dyson uh, cleaners were quite poor suction-wise. Didn't have a very good agitator either, but they caught on with the public. Next page, still on the Pure Power, and again another picture of the new Pure Power S-Class. Uh, that model is... Da -da -da. Is it U3150 or U3142? I'm not sure. It'll say on the next page because, again, we haven't got... We've just we've got a brief overview of the machines. This page shows the, a turbo nozzle you could got with some machines. And there's a lime green model and a dark blue. And then some pictures at the bottom showing the S-Class filtration and the filter. The easy bag removal and dirt disposal. It says lightweight 6.5 kilograms. Right, finally, we're on to. Oh, we ha actually, I don't think it says which the. Uh, oh, hang on then. The the light model, the see through model, is U2. Let's say U3250. If you've got a U2350, you're very lucky. I believe I know of one collector, I think. Mark from Australia who lives in London. I think he'll have one of those. He has a lot of. Hoover cleaners from the era that I'm most interested in. Right, so again, back to here. This model I had, the U3137, so it was, I think it's one I lent my mum as well. Nice bright orange colour. Difference between this one and the others, it actually had a translucent head. There was also a Comet exclusive, which I also had, which was more or less the same, but it had a yellow body. And a translucent head. So you've got the various models here including the lifetime model which had a reusable emptyable cloth bag. And you've got all the specifications down here. Right. So these of course are all still British made, the Pure Powers or EU, but I'm a thing, I think they were made in Canvas Lang, Scotland. Oh right, now we've still got Turbo Power. Turbo Power 2 here, so we've got uh, an 1100 watt burgundy colour and we've got the uh, dark blue 
I think these could be the very last variants of the Turbo Power 2 machines. I know Index, the store that was like Argos, they had a very similar one in their lineup quite late on. So the burgundy is U2188 and the blue one is U2107. So there we go. Still still hanging on. Oh sorry I forgot this one on the other page, this yellow machine. I think I've seen that in Index. I saw a blue one very similar. So very basic Turbo 2. Then we've still got the regular Turbo, Turbo Juniors, the Turbo Power with the tools attached and that's the, that's the one I have I think, the U1050. Very basic hard bag turbo power. I've actually got the colours written here. Neon blue, yellow, stellar red, Venus blue. Alright, oops, I've skipped two pages. Ah, so now onto the suction cleaners, cylinder cleaners, canister. This is the Alpina. So when Alpina was launched, it was launched with only three models in the UK and I think this brochure is showing quite a few more including the remote control, infrared remote control machine, the top model. So here we have a big shot of the Alpina. Down here we've got a close-up of the infrared controls on the handle and the control panel and showing it's got 350 watt suction power and they're all going on about allergen filtration and allergen seal, sealed suction. So here's the Alpina lineup. So I assume this one will be the top model, the S SC260, the Alpina 1600 Filtra S with the um, remote and right, you see I never never really saw many of these in the shops. Now I had the Al Alpina Lifetime, it was in the same blue as the Pure Power Lifetime, I had one of those and I've still got I think I've got two Alpinas and I think that's the other one I've got, the SC211. But I've never had the model with this power nozzle, electric power nozzle on SC, SC260. That power nozzle I'm sure is very similar to one Sebo used to provide with a C model. So there we go, full line up of Alpina cleaners. And the next, next we've got the uh, specifications. Now we're on to a smaller, more compact range, the Telios. I've got a few Telioses. This could be, again, this could be the last generation of Telios cleaners. So again, we've got two pages with some of the features and benefits of the range. 305, 305 sorry, watt suction power. And it's showing the filtration and sealed suction system. So here's the lineup for cleaners. Now I think uh, these weren't the last actually, there were further ones I think after this, I'm not sure. They were certainly coming towards the end I think. So um, lovely bright colours for this year. We had one brochure I was showing you, the last brochure I showed you, all, all the colours were a bit dark, a lot of them were, and now they've added especially this very nice neon green and what is this colour called? Now this is another Lifetime, so all the Lifetime, I'm assuming that's the Lifetime model because it's the same Fresco Blue, they call that, Neon Green, Stellar Red and this one is Moonstone Blue Metallic. All very smart looking vacuum cleaners. I'm pretty sure that that uh, Fresco Blue one, that says double layer, oh no it isn't. Isn't that, that's odd, I don't think it is a lifetime. Not sure if they did a lifetime, I think they did a lifetime Telios. Comment underneath if you can confirm or deny. Then, even smaller than the Telios, the Ariane. Every time I see the name Ariane, I think of a song by Tasmin Archer. She sang a song called Ariane. It's a nice name for vacuum. I've had a few Ariannes in my time. I don't think I ever had one with the variable speed. As you can see on this blue model you've got variable power dial. I certainly had a red Ariane and I might have had a neon green, I think I had a yellow as well. But they were just um, more compact 
little cleaner, slightly less features than the Teleos. They didn't have onboard tools, they had tool storage on the actual tube. But they were a nice little lightweight cleaner. Here we are, here's the Ariane again, lovely bright colours isn't it? But they're continuing with similar colours to the old other machines. You've, we've got this nice yellow colour, which is Al Alpina yellow they're saying, neon green again, stella red and royal blue. You can see on the uh, yellow one here on this page, you sh it's showing the tools attached onto the cord, uh, not the cord, the uh, hose storage thing there, the parking bracket. This here, the efficient floor nozzle, that was more or less the same as supplied with the early SIBO K series canisters. So, you know, it's quite a good nozzle. I think it did have a metal base plate, even the Hoover version. So lovely little, lo lovely little uh, colourful cleaners, brighten up your housework with a Hoover Ariane. What's next? Again, it's lovely, lovely quality paper. Now this revolutionary brush and wash was, it was revolutionary because until we got, I remember we got, my mum and dad paid for this brush and wash. That's the first upright carpet cleaner we had until this came along. We were using the Aquamaster and it's, you know, it's a good machine, but it's quite hard work. It's got a, a small nozzle, so it takes a while to clean a whole area. As soon as we got this, it was wow, because it combined, of course, these spin scrub brushes to really agitate the solution into the carpet. It was so much easier to use and it lasted a long time. We had this model for years and it picked up, I can't tell you how much dog mess it, not mess as in, you know, solid mess, but it picked up a lot of mess that the dogs left. It cleaned the carpets and I think we replaced the spin scrub brushes once or twice, but nothing else needed replacing and it's, it was fantastic. Uh, the most similar machine to the Hoover Brush and Wash now is uh, in the Vax commercial lineup. Obviously, if you look on my channel, I did the Vax Oasis Complete, which again was very similar. Set made by Hoover as well, the Vax Oasis. This Hoover brush and wash, I think I said earlier it was USA, but it was actually made in Mexico, but in a Hoover factory. So that was, you know, I couldn't believe it when I first saw that. And I thought, wow, finally, that is fantastic. And it, and it was a good machine. I'd still recommend it even now. Right, I've still got a three or a five in one, I think they called it, with the AquaJet because it had hard floor cleaning ability, upholstery cleaning and dry cleaning as well, of course, and wet pickup. So that was still in the lineup, the AquaJet 5000. And then again, still holding on, still holding its own. We've got the shampoo polisher F4002, the Hoover Double Duty and the Hoover brush vac. Now, I'm not sure if there's any other machines or is it just specification. Or I don't think it will be specification because in this brochure, as you'll notice, the specification for every cleaner is shown actually on the cleaner's page, which I suppose is better, easier to check when you're browsing rather than having to look at the back. Is that it? I'm trying to sort of... It's very thick card, you see, paper. Yeah, that's it then. And on the back we've got a Teleos I'm just trying again because just in case. On the back we've got Teleos and this strap line, rely on Hoover to do the homework, that didn't last very long at all. Uh, we had Hoover Who Better, that lasted, that's the one I remember the most and before that I think it was Hoover Make Things Better For You and we had the a lot of techno with a bit of logic, a bit of a silly, silly thing that. But rely on Hoover to do the homework. And it's Hoover European Appliance Group now, still in Merthyr Tidville in Dragon Park, Mid Glamorgan. And printed June 98, this brochure. There we go then, that is that is the last brochure of the Advent series. But a lot of you have made comments saying you enjoyed seeing these brochures. And a lot of you would have owned these brochures, but of course you throw them away. You don't think you want to look at them again. But fortunately I kept most of mine, so I've... Hope you've enjoyed looking at it. If if you want, I might do maybe a brochure a month in the new year. 
not just Hoover, I do have other brands as well, but the Hoover ones were easier to get hold of. I've got some early Dyson ones and other makes as well, but it is mainly Hoover. And if anyone wants to look at any washing machine ones, just let me know under here. If there's enough demand for the washing machine brochures, I might flick through some of those as well for you. Right, time, to, time for me to make another video. Hopefully uh, I'll soon be over. Just I think I've got four more videos to make and then I can finally have a rest. And then it'll be Christmas. And then the new year will start with a lot more demos and reviews on my channel. So until tomorrow, thanks for watching and uh, Merry Christmas.